biometrics and research quality. This is actually a quantitative measure to indicate the quality of publications. In another words, it helps you to distinguish between good and poor journals for you to consider which journals you would like to submit your manuscript to. We did mention that there are journals of high prestige level. A lot of researchers would like to have their papers to be published there, which if they manage to get the paper published, it would be a great honor and being recognized of good quality and offering good impact to the pool of knowledge. Now the question is, how do you distinguish which journals or which publisher is better than the others? It is quite difficult to tell which the quality of the publications. It is very much dependent on who are submitting for the journals. Some good journals have better publicity. More researchers would like to submit their papers. They have a better bargaining power and better options to select those among the best to be published in their journals. However, there are also some small and unpopular journals have limited numbers of researchers submitting their manuscript. Out of the numbers of submissions available, they will need to choose those which is at least meeting their requirement and expectations to be published. It doesn't mean that these kind of small journals or less popular journals can never produce good journals papers for the access of the research community. Those are very dependent on the authors deciding to submit to it or submit to elsewhere. Nevertheless, there will be some measures that provide indications as a reference to the research community in terms of the quality of the publications to have some basic ideas which journals are more popular, which journals are more widely accepted by the research community, and so on and so forth. All these measurements are based on certain principles, giving some ideas in terms of the quality of the publications. It cannot directly measure the quality of those publications. These are among the measures that you can look into, such as the citation counts. It means that the numbers of time a research outputs appear in the bibliography of the other articles and books. The hash index. It means that the numbers of paper, which is given a symbol H, published by someone that are cited at the minimum numbers of H times. This gives you an idea the consistency of an author producing papers which are popularly being cited by the others. Let's say now you are very productive, publish 50 journal papers, but there is only one paper being cited by somebody else. Your H index now it will be equal to 1 instead of 50. Let's say now you have another researcher only managed to publish 10 journals and all the journals has been cited at least more than 8 times. That means the hash index will be equal to 8, which in this case, the latter will have the hash index higher than the former, even though the former produce much more paper than the latter. This is one of the popular criteria used to indicate the consistency in terms of the quality of the publications. Next is the journal's impact factor. It is referring to an average count of citations per paper appearing in the journals in the preceding two years. The higher this number, the better the quality of the publications it implies. Next, we talk about this site score. It is referring to 
the average number of citations in the year by all items published in preceding three years in that journal. Next, it will be the Saimago journal rank. This is the one that I mentioned in our previous videos, giving ranking from Q1 to Q4, which indicate the prestigious and the citations of that particular journals. Next, it will be the source normalized impact per paper. It quantifies the contextual impacts of the citations based on the total citations in the subject field. You know that there is a variety of the measurements giving an indication in terms of the quality of the publication. Of course, you would like all these numbers to be as big as possible and it reflects certain things generally in terms of the popularity of being cited in the research community. Some measures are based on the journals and there are also measures are based on the artists. It is also noted that these bibliometric measures is debatable because there is no true measurements in terms of the quality of the papers or the quality of the journals. It is merely indicating the popularity of your papers, which can be governed by various aspects, such as the accessibility of your papers, and so on and so forth. These are some questions that arise related to these bibliometric measures. Is the counting citations a good method to measure the scientific worth? Is it fair to compare individuals across area based on the numbers of citations? Should the size of the relevant scientific community be taken into account? This one is especially when you want to make comparison across different fields, some obviously more popular, that means more researchers are involved in those studies and some are more highly specialized which is less popular and less researcher would like to study and then is there any sort of ad hoc citation measure better than subjectivities and so on and so forth some researchers may not agree with these biometric measures some may be too obsessed with it the response of different researchers on these biometric measures differ based on the belief of the researchers. What you need to know here is there is no direct measurements in terms of the quality of the publications or the quality of a research output. All these measures are just some mechanism to indicate for you to have an idea in terms of those quality because there are a lot of other factors which can lead to exceptional case and sometimes you cannot make apple to apple comparisons it can be due to the size of the academic or research community it can be due to the popularity of that particular journals and sometimes there are measures that can easily be manipulated by the journals or by the author themselves I would say that you can take those measures as a reference for you to have an idea whether those are good journals and whether those are poor journals. Those scoring poor for those biometric measure, it doesn't mean that they are poor journals in fact. It merely reflects that it may not acquire much attention by the research community due to various factors. Remember we mentioned about the indexing? Imagine when you want to go for literature review, you want to search for the research articles which is relevant to you. Normally you will go for Google Scholar or you will go for some famous journals. Automatically you will be able to search the relevant journals papers for the indexing which is compatible and more easily accessed through the search engine or within the database. The point here is, it is very much dependent on the research community, how they search, how they perceive, 
how they assess those publications that made up those measures and discourse. To me, it would be an additional bonus to me if my papers manage to get through those papers with high bibliometric measures. Sometimes, if I feel myself, the quality of my papers may not be up to the standard of those top journals. I might want to try those with lower bibliometric score to try my luck. It is just a reference to me to decide which journal I would like to go for. As for the literature review, I would just cite and refer to those which is relevant where the findings or the principles that I can adopt in my research studies. That means the selections of the citations is not actually being governed by these bibliometric measures. Nevertheless, personally I feel this Saimago Journal's ranking can be a good guide for me. You know that there are Q1 to Q4 journals as rated by the website. Q1 means the top 25% of the journals, which is the most prestigious. In my personal experience with Q1 journals, the chances of being rejected is extremely high. Q2 will represent the second quarter of those group of the journals which fall between the top 25 to 50%. And Q3 and Q4, it will be between 50 to 75% and 75 to 100% within the groups. In fact, there are also a lot of journals are not listed within the Q1 to Q4. You may also try that, depending on your needs and the purpose. There is no saying that you must go for the Q1 and Q4 journals. There is one more thing that you need to know regarding this bibliometrics and research quality. You need to be careful with these bogus metrics and indexing companies used by the predatory publications. There is quite a number of misleading metrics as listed here, which I obtained from these publications. Personally, I'm not aware of any of those. This comes to our next discussion about these predatory publications. It means that there are certain publications who are actively searching for others to get their papers to be published in their journals for the sake of profit earning without actually looking into the quality of the paper. Where most of the researchers would like their papers to be published and to be read by the research community and they are very concerned about the performance of their publications in terms of the bibliometric measures which in this case the predatory publications created a series of misleading metrics as a way to convince you that their papers are of quality and is actively and popularly being referred by the academic communities. You will need to be careful of this. I believe there could be more, and every now and then, there will be new metrics created as a way to persuade the artists to submit for publications with certain paid costs, which at the end of the day, not being recognized by your institutions, as well as the general research community. If you want to be safe, probably you look for the indexing, such as the Scopus, the Web of Science, Google Citations, or looking through the database, which is known to be famous within your research field, such as the Science Direct, Spring Joe's, and so on and so forth. Good luck for your try to submitting your research articles to some good journal's papers.